Hi, I'm Kirsten Hatfield, a local Vancouver artist and previous exhibitor at VanCaf. And today I'm going to be showing you guys 12 different textures you can do in watercolor. Before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about what watercolor is. So what makes watercolor different than other kinds of paint is the binder. Watercolor uses a water soluble binder, um, usually gum arabic or honey, so it has a lot less adhesion and cohesion than other types of paint. Because of this, we get unique properties of watercolor, such as granulation, and watercolor is usually used where you add a lot of water to the pigment. Today I'll be using two different colors of watercolor paint. I'll be using a mineral-based color, ultramarine blue, and a plant-based color, opera pink. So mineral-based colors tend to granulate more because the pigments are larger molecules and they're made of ground up minerals. And plant-based pigments tend to granulate less because they're smaller molecules and they're made of plants. The other things I'll be using today are a variety of household objects such as salt, rubbing alcohol, string, burlap, saran wrap, dish soap, all sorts of stuff. And I'll be using two kinds of paper. A uh, hot press watercolor paper, which is super smooth, and a cold press watercolor paper that's very rough and toothy. I'll start by using the cold press watercolor paper, um, and then at the end we can compare the two. The first texture I'm going to start with is just wet paint on dry paper. For both colors, I'll do a saturated strip and then add some more water and do a less saturated strip. The paint tends to stay pretty much in place when you apply it onto dry paper and some granulation may occur. The second texture I'm going to show you is also a super basic but helpful one. It's called a wash. So you just add as much water as you want to dilute the paint and fill the space with the wet diluted paint. It's pretty important that you fill the whole space while it's wet or you'll get different variations that you may not have wanted. The third texture is a wet on wet technique. So I start by wetting the entire area and then dab in some diluted watercolor. Depending on which pigments you use, they'll create various blooming and granulation effects and mixing pigments together can yield very interesting results. So now we're at the part of the video where I'm going to start showing more experimental kinds of watercolor textures. A lot of these require things that you find around your house. So for this one I start with a wash and then I'm going to add in just table salt and rice to create different sorts of textures and sort of enhance the granulation effect. Similarly to the last texture, this one will also start with a wash and then I will add some drops of 99% rubbing alcohol using a paintbrush. The rubbing alcohol repels the water creating these interesting halo-like negative shapes. 99% rubbing alcohol works the best but you can use 70% or 40%, the results will just be less dramatic. So pretty much any object you can place into wet watercolor and the watercolor will take on the silhouette of that object as it dries. Another thing that's really interesting to play with is plastic. The softer the plastic, the better I find it is to manipulate and work with. I prefer to use saran wrap because I can really see what's going to happen to the watercolor as it dries and plan out my composition. Aside from saran wrap, you can use other sorts of plastics with textures such as bubble wrap, which I'm going to show here, and creates this really unique, interesting polka dot sort of effect. Aside from plastic, other things you can use include textiles. So this one I use burlap. You can stick the dry burlap directly into the wet paint, but I find it works better if you either pre-wet the burlap or add some paint and water on top of the burlap to help it stick down to the paper. So the next texture I'm going to show is a splatter effect. I covered half the square with water so you could see how it would look wet on wet as well as wet on dry and I just used a firm bristle brush and a sturdy surface to flick the paint onto the paper. Well, similarly to the other wet on wet technique, on the wet side each little speck creates an interesting little bloom. So for this next effect I mixed dish soap with each color of paint and created two different colored washes. I then blew bubbles with a straw and placed the bubbles down onto the paper. If you put too many bubbles, they kind of all blend together, so you have to be pretty sparing with this effect. As it dries, the bubbles will pop and create different sorts of shapes, which creates a pretty unique effect, but it's often unpredictable and hard to control. This one requires quite a bit of practice, and I find it works a lot better on hot press paper than cold press paper. 
So as I mentioned earlier, you can pretty much put any object into wet watercolor and it will create a silhouette of that object. String I find is a really handy one to use to create interesting effects and directional lines, but you can use natural elements such as leaves or man-made elements such as coins or different objects to create geometric shapes as well. So the last thing I want to talk about is frisket or masking fluid. The most common one is liquid latex, which I'm using here. Um, frisket refers to anything that resists the watercolor paint. So you can use wax, acrylic, oil pastel, crayon, tape. So for this one I'm using liquid latex as the first strip, tape as the second strip, oil pastel as the third strip, and just plain acrylic matte medium as the fourth strip. The nice thing about the liquid latex and the tape is that they're both removable and won't affect the overall texture of your paper at the end. The downside of them is you have to wait until the watercolor is completely dry to remove them. So after everything was dry and removed, I decided to do a 13th bonus texture, which is scrubbing. You can use a firm bristle brush or Q-tips or a high density sponge such as a makeup sponge and a little bit of water to go back into watercolor paint and remove it. This really only works on high quality paper though. So after I finished my 12 textures on my cold press paper, I repeated the process on some hot press paper just to show you guys the different sorts of textures that will appear depending on what kind of paper you're using. Once everything was dry, I removed all the objects and cut them into strips so we could look at them side by side. The top is the cold press paper and the bottom is the hot press paper. As you can see, some of the effects appear a lot more vividly on the cold press paper and others appear more vividly on the hot press paper. Depending on what style you want to do and if you're going to add pen and ink, you can choose what kind of paper you prefer. Lastly, I want to show you a time lapse video of a painting I created using most of the techniques shown. For this painting, I used both mineral and plant based pigments on a rough cold press watercolor paper. At the end, I went in with some Indian ink uh, fineliner pens as well as a white pen. I tend to prefer to work paint first and then inking second, but I know a lot of artists work the other way around. No matter how you work, I hope you enjoy learning these 12 different watercolor techniques, and thank you so much for watching my video.